So this is something a wee bit different for you guys. Um, if you're into the old guardsman party, you'll definitely love this. It's very, very similar. Okay. Coming out of the shadow run thread at this since I promised a story of a legendary shadow run that guy. As a general rule I really enjoyed TGS Tales of Woe and Wonderment. Enough so that I'd like to think that one of my gaming group's ongoing tales is worthy of adding to the fold. Anyone else who has Shadoran stories, go ahead and post them. Too I'd love to hear them. In particular, it is the tale of Trout, formerly called Deadman his own personal choice of street name. Techno Ninja Extraordinaire and that guy also extraordinaire. Those of you prone to screaming weeaboo at every character concept, prepare to scream it at a character that deserves it. Some quick disclaimers before I begin I am going to be trip fogging for the majority of this story. I am not trying to malign the glorious gestalt spirit of 4chan, because I know trip fags, as a rule, suck. It makes it way easier to pick up where I leave off after each post with minimal confusion. Also, I'm typing this up while at lecture, so I may take little breaks to, you know, work, or ask the professor questions. Now, onto the story. Ask three Shadowrun players what the core character roles of Shadowrun are, especially Shadowrun 4th edition, and you'll get four answers. However, I've got a little exercise from you, TG, for more storytelling oomph, which requires a basic consensus on the character roles. Hence, for said exercise, we will assume that there are four core roles Street Samurai, Hacker, Mage, and Infiltrator. Though the team had both a rigor and a face as well, these were both half roles and thus are irrelevant in this particular instance. In brief summary, a street samurai is a combat monster who fucks shit up, and usually figures prominently in backup plans. A hacker is a nerd who runs everything computer related. A mage is your dude who does magic. No fucking shit. An infiltrator is a guy who either ninjas or bluffs his way in to gather intel or complete mission objectives. If anyone could confirm that there in the thread, I can't move on to the next part of said exercise. Basically, we're going to play a little game, and I need someone to answer questions for this game. Excellent. Here's your part I am going to describe each of our player characters in order. You are going to guess what role they filled. That way, when you hit that guy, you can properly appreciate the dawning horror that filled the hearts of the GM and all of the other players. Sound good? Character 1. Real name John Doe? Street name Dervish. Formerly Fether Step. Metatype Orc. Dervish was a gen engineered super soldier who woke up in an alleyway in Everett with a pair of pants, a room key to a coffin hotel, 20 bucks, and a host of comically illegal cyber bits. Experimental cyberies? Check. Implanted blades all throughout the body? Check. Wolverine skeleton? Check. Rocket feet? Check Mathafucking check. Dude is like a hoverbike on legs. Whatever he was before his memory got erased, Dervish apparently wasn't very nice. Well, assuming he wasn't, like, in a tube up until 15 minutes before the start of the campaign. His positive qualities were mostly stuff like biocompatibility and a typo system, which makes it easier to put bioengineered parts in him. And his negative qualities involved him being an amnesiac amnesia rank 1 and having no contacts hung out to dry, what with probably being a brainless tube baby prior to the campaign. I'm sorry if this is insultingly obvious, but it's for good reason to emphasize the terribleness of the last character. Which role did Dervish fill? Mage. Hacker. Street Samurai. Infiltrator. Street Samurai. Correct. Character 2. Real name Malcolm McWilliams. Street name 2D. Metatype Human. 2D was a teenage member of the criminal hacking group Chaos Engine fluffed as B but more murderous and an all around directionless loser when the crash 2.0 rendered him comatose at his computer. Waking up in the hospital to find his immediate family deceased and his pockets empty, he was swiftly placated by his mind's quasi-mystical connection to the new wireless matrix. After a shits and giggles crime spree, he was pinched by Evo Biomedical Seattle and only saved from a swift trip to the dissection table by the timely intervention of a bunch of Novacoked up Halloweeners blowing up the warehouse he was being temporarily held in. At the time of the start of this story, he is known by the media as the 2D Bomber, a terrorist wanted for using Matrix-connected RC cars and walking dolls loaded up with nitro and hand grenades to blast Evo Medical Clinics. Negative Qualities Enemy Evo Biomedical Seattle. Vendetta Evo Biomedical Seattle. Signature leaves a data bomb on hack notes, with an old Timmy gunpowder bomb icon. Paranoid Evo is after me you guys. Positive qualities. Technomancer. Paragon Day Dallas basically he's like the hardware tech support guy from hell. 
erased when he shows up in video feeds, an old Timmy Bomb appears over his face, laughing man style, made man chaos engine, 2D was a, mage, hacker, infiltrator, name 2D, hacker, corrector mundo, character 3, real name Damien Sanitaire, street name Geppetto, metatype elf, Although an unassuming suburban Italian-American white collar as middle management man by day, Damien hides a terrible secret. He is actually a serial killer obsessed with ritual suicide, using mind and body puppeting magic to orchestrate a spat of suicides and murder suicides across Seattle. He keeps his dual life well hidden, carefully concealing his magical talent. His magic in and of itself is perverse and sinister, reflecting his nihilist beliefs. His spirits are cruel, spiteful things taking the forms of mysterious men in black, mocking fey, and whirlwinds of infernal fire. However, on the surface, he is just Mr. Sanitaire, shipping manager and neighborhood watch member, and he likes it that way. Positive qualities were mostly magic related except for a variant on the Assassin's Creed Oath, which basically swears him to secrecy. Negative qualities were mostly obsessive compulsive stuff of the type that serial killers are prone to. Geppetto was our herb derp, mage, infiltrator, Infilter Mage, Ayep. Character 4. Real name Joseka Gahara. Street name Dead Man, later Trout. Metatype Elf. Joseka Gahara was a Japanese national who was also a member of the Texan Lone Star PMC and also a Yakuza member at the same time. He became a wanted man when he did something totally more grimdark and hardcore than 2D or Geppetto's silly players could have thought up, namely shooting up an orphanage. But it was okay, the orphan's parents were mafia members, and all is fair in the secret war of the accuser. Sekigahira has not been found by his former employers at Lone Star because he is a ninja. In addition to being super stealthy, he is a master of guns, like Mami Tomoe from Madoka Magica. He took the name of Dead Man because he knows that, like all honorable Japanese, he must die someday. Cont. Negative qualities. Wanted Dead Man had a gigantic bounty on his head for jeeking a bunch of orphans. Records on file Lone Star, the same corp that wanted him, had a complete dossier on his behavior, psychology, safe houses, and contacts. Criminal Sin Deadman was implanted with a chip that broadcast his location to the cops who know everything about him and have a gigantic bounty on his head every time he passed or entered any gridlinked municipal area, namely all of Seattle. Braggart Deadman had to make a composure check to avoid interrupting conversations to talk about how he deeped all those orphans, resulting in an alert which called the cops who had a gigantic bounty on his head and knew everything about him. Positive qualities Deadman thought ninjas were really cool so he blew all of his money and a restricted gear quality on a freaking tactical ops suit, to the point where he didn't have any money left for a lifestyle and thus was a homeless guy in tactical gear. However, he didn't like the idea of playing an ugly character his words, so he min-maxed for social infiltration, including blowing at least half his calm on facial sculpt adept powers. He had the power to be anyone and anything, so long as that anyone and anything had an implant that identified him to everyone who ever looked at him as Joseka Gahara, wanted fugitive. What role did dead man fill? Infiltrator. That's right, it's this kind of story. Chapter 1 The Start of Darkness. Our GM has a very specific style, in the sense that he likes using modules, but will then completely warp them to his own ends and just adapt, adapt, adapt. Basically, it allows him to not have to make up shit like stat blocks on the fly. But he also effectively heads off metagaming because people who think they're going the direction of the original module often end up driving their snazzy Mercury West wind off a cliff. However, there is one module that he will always use, gleefully unironically, in every Shadoran game because it is awesome. That module is food fight. I have no idea how many runners have met during a stuffer shack shootout, but hot damn, it's gotta be a lot of them. Our first session opened up on Dervish, at the time known as Swell. He didn't have a name, so I am just going to stick with Dervish even though it's anachronistic. He awoke in an alleyway in Everett with naught but pants, a room key, and 20 bucks. His legs weak, he used a dumpster as leverage to stand, and then tottered into the streets, nearly missing a few speeding cars. Remember at the start of Terminator, with a confused but purposeful looking muscle robot walking naked through the street? Yeah, basically that, but give Arnold tusks and grey green skin. Eventually Dervish managed to ask a few terrified and baffled bystanders where his key came from, and started on a 7 block walk to the hotel. 
When he got there, and managed to locate his cubicle, he found a full set of clothes and a briefcase with a comlink and a gun in it, answering absolutely no questions whatsoever. Drained, confused, and a little bit scared, Dervish dressed, pocketed the gun and comlink, and decided to reflect upon his situation over a shitty soy burger. As he set his comlink to search for the nearest stuffer shack, two blocks away. Meanwhile, in a Halloween block about seven streets down, 2D woke to his belligerent hungover orc Jagalo girlfriend yelling at him about a distinct lack of beer in the apartment. He was casually informed that, if there was no beer in the apartment within the next hour, one or more of these things would happen. His knees would be caved in with a baseball bat. No sex for a month. He'd be out of the apartment. She'd break those computers to teach him to love them more than her. She'd break his toys. The last threat there involved toys filled with nitroglycerine, so 2D hastily threw on his best white text on black ironic t-shirt and did a skinny white boy jog downstairs to his pickup truck, avoiding the burly orcs and clown makeup that haunted his apartment building. Considering he was running to the Shadoran equivalent of a 7-11, he didn't think to bring his drones. This was probably a mistake. Dead man for his part, was walking down the street in Everett, using his tactical suit to be totally inconspicuous as shit. Sensing an easy mark after all, some idiot was walking down the street in a six digit cost suit, a mugger jumped out of an alleyway, sidled up alongside dead man with a gun, and demanded his money. Without hesitating, but also without waiting for any demands, dead man drew his Raz Alpha, a loud as fuck heavy pistol, and shot the guy in the face. Note that, though Everett is not a good part of town by any stretch of the imagination, shooting someone in the face in broad daylight in the middle of the street is a different thing entirely. Our GM warned Deadman that he should probably get going. Deadman no, I loot him first. GM you, loot him? Deadman up, uh, yeah. This is an RPG, right? I loot him. GM okay, you take his gun. It's a Ruger. Deadman not just his gun, his gear. GM he's a mugger, he doesn't have any gear. Deadman he's wearing armor, right? GM you mean clothes? Deadman yeah, I loot that. GM you take his clothes. Deadman yes. GM you strip the grungy ass mugger with a hole in his face naked. Deadman I can't sell his loot if I don't. GM what? Deadman the party is meeting up at a shop, right? I'll sell the loot there. In case you're wondering, we'd actually played a game with this guy before. It was in the Song of Ice and Fire RPG, and he'd played a Mista who didn't know heraldry and didn't heal. Although that was kind of a dumb character, it was at the very least believable. The fact that he had regressed into JRPG logic for Shadoran was a completely new phenomenon. All things considered, it was probably lucky for Geppetto that he joined the campaign late. So Dervish arrives first, and enters the Stuffer Shack. A bell rings. The cashier boredly announces, Welcome to Stuffer Shack. Stuff your face on half the cash. Dervish instinctively grunts and makes for the soy burger aisle. Considering that, to his knowledge, he did not exist before 30 minutes ago, he briefly wonders how the hell he knew what a soy burger was, and begins pondering this while zoning the hell out. Staring at the burger packaging. 2D arrives shortly thereafter. Grumbling about his relationship and never enough beer in the apartment, he stomps over to the drinks aisle in his clunky combat boots that he thinks are totally badass but mostly make him look like a tool since he's 5 feet 4 and weighs about 130 pounds. Trout, in his blood-stained tactical ops gear, marches right the fuck up to the cashier, deposits a worn, stained set of clothes and an armed handgun on the counter, and prepares to ask how much money the vendor will give him. The GM wisely decided to launch the module at this point. Sorry, dead man. He was Trout later. The bell rings once as a scared-looking elf girl, Huddling a child to her chest, sprints through the doors and makes for the maintenance door of the stuffer shack. The baby is in absolute conniptions, having evidently been recently disturbed. The girl looks tired but also alert, and tries to melt behind the aisles as visual cover. Not one to ever help a clearly desperate situation. 2D accesses the store speakers which he had previously hacked, on instinct as he entered the store and announces, in his best saccharine fake public service voice, would the mother of the child in aisle 6 please shut him the fuck up, lest the staff shut him up for you. The girl whimpers and shrinks behind the snack stand just before four dudes in balaclavas, each wielding shitty baron's guns and dressed in torn, second hand combat fatigues, burst through the door and yell, nobody move. Trout rolled extremely well in initiative and went first. 
skipping any of the silly steps like taking cover or finding out what they want. He defaults to picking the mugger's gun back up off the counter and shooting at the thugs. His shot goes wild, striking one of the arcade machines. Dovish, operating on instinct and spurred by gunshots, boosted right over the burger aisle. The thugs didn't realize what the fuck had happened until the guy who had yelled nobody move fell apart in three chunks. Arterial spray coating the plexiglass of the slidé doors. 2D did the thing that a channel would do, namely booking it out back with the girl, where they both hid behind the stuff a shack's delivery van and made awkward eye contact. His eyes unfocuses as he switches his vision to that of the interior cameras. Girl did you hack the speakers? 2D sh- I also hacked the cameras. I'll let you know when it's clear. Just keep that baby fucking quiet. His eyes unfocus. Whoops. By this point the stuffer shack has turned into a punk music video, with shoppers running around knocking over stands and smacking into each other, trout firing wildly and hitting windows, displays, and the odd bystander he had about 5 dice to pistols, 7 with automatics but he was using the mugger's revolver, and dervish killing a dude per initiative pass. 2D watches, giggling, through the security camera, as Dervish systematically tears the terrified thugs into their constituent parts with his cyber blades and bay hands. You know those extremely brutal 2 dude lethal finishers from the new Deus Ex. Think that, but about twice as fast and with 4 guys. By the time the 4th guy's head pops off, 2D announces, oh shit and uploads the whole vid feed to 4chan. In a chipper mood now that his day has been lightened with some seriously hardcore gore and OC to boot. 2D steps out of the back of the store clapping and cheering for the rocket powered murder orc at the front of the store. The girl slowly follows him, holding the baby tight and eyeing the ragu sauce dripping from the walls nervously. Dervish exits kill mode to see that everyone is more or less unharmed. Except for a random elf poser who took a bullet from Deadman and the fact that everyone in the front half of the store is covered in thug bits. 2D dude, you are the fucking bomb. Where'd you learn moves like that? Dervish I don't really know. 2DO, so it's the where then? Where do you get the hookup? Dervish I don't know that either. 2D, do you have a name? Dervish, I don't know. 2D gave him a long, confused look. 2D do you have a cum link? Dervish produced his cum link. One of these things? 2D grabbed his cum link from his hands, quickly unlocking it and looking through his files. It's registered to a Garrett Jordan. Dervish I guess that me, then. 2D well, look. Garrett, I'm I put my name in your contacts, considering you evidently don't have many friends, judging by your contacts list, I feel like you'd be a useful guy to know. At this point Dervish was thoroughly confused, and was almost thankful for the sound of Lone Star Sirens in GM's world, when KE picked up LS Seattle contract. They also ate up the local LS branch. Deadman was less thankful for the sound of Lone Star Sirens, and booked it out the back at top speed. 2D and Dervish sat on the curb and prepared to give their testimony to the star. Right as one of the cops sidled over to the two of them to ask for a statement, though, the other took a look at the vid feed from the stuffer shack. Ho, oh, Lee, shit. His partner spoke up. What is it? Sekigahiro is like two blocks away from here. No fucking way. Both cops promptly ran back to their car to chase after our erstwhile weeaboo. And 2D and Dervish quietly split to their respective homes. The next morning, 2D and Dervish got a conference call from one Danny McCreary, a fixer in the Irish Mafia. He thanked the two burgeoning young criminals for their service in saving his niece's life, and offered for them to come down to his runner bar to see if they were the right material he was looking for. Figuring that, as a broke channer and an amnesiac, they had nothing to lose, they both headed down to the bar. Trout went down there independently because, as he informed us, I am already a professional and proficient runner, unlike 2D and Dervish. Daniel Wright. First things first, you boys will need street names. As of this little job, you two are officially deniable. So come up with something. Alright, Whitebread, you're up first. 2D 2D. Danny well, everyone and their mother will know you're a hacker, but it works. Big guy? Dervish Fifa foot. Danny what? 2D gay. Danny number. Dervish okay. Fifa step. You know, cause I have hover feet. 2D really gay. Danny have to agree with 2D here. Dervish alright, you bastards. What do you suggest? Danny considering how you carved those thugs into mincemeat, I'd go with Dervish. 2D not gay. Dervish okay. Fine. I'll be dervish. Following this little bit of improv comedy, Danny explained the nature of the job. His niece had made the mistake of being the mistress of a department of water and power official. See, 
This official had been rerouting water out of the north side and into more profitable developing areas, areas in which he'd bought property. Think the plot of Chinatown with Jack Nicholson. When Brianna, his niece, had a kid, this official decided he was getting too tied down and tried to get rid of her. So Tootie and Dervish were going to get rid of his other mistress. Right on his wife's doorstep. The GM had realized that the party was leaning pretty black hat from the start, and boy did he deliver. Now, on to dead man. Rather, when Brianna, Daniel's niece, had a kid. I worded that confusingly. I will forever hold a special place for my GM in the rotten apple core that is my heart over this encounter. He had expected dead man to hook up with the main team and, you know, not be terrible. So he had to quickly add lib or milk run for dead man. Basically as a way of gauging if the player could do anything in Shadow and right. So he introduced Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson was a frat boy. An orc frat boy. He had a baseball cap on and his white polo shirt had its collar popped. He had earrings on the back of one ear. He was wearing over expensive AR shades. And they were running a porn vid. He was on his fifth keystone light by the time he approached Trout. He was called Mr. Jackson because he forgot what the name that a runner's employer was called was supposed to be. Jackson yo, what's up homeboy? You look like a shadow in a, and I be needin' a runner for real, dog. Trout greetings, employer. What is she wa shadow in a? Jackson what oh she what? Do Debra, I don't need no fancy Asian shit. I just got a job that I needs a stone cold colonas mythifica to do. Norm Zane, that you, bruh. Trout I am indeed a stone cold killing as mythifica. What is the job? Jackson I'ma pay you 500 bucks to totally beat the shit out of this nerdlinger in my econ class. Trout, go on. Jackson there's this douchefag named Simon Berkowitz in my econ class. Bruh, econ 104 was s-pose taby tight solid. Norm Zane, just coast on the fuck through and jet your GPA up. But this fucker, he goes to every class and aces every test and it ain't fair. Yo, the way he be bringing the bell curve up. The only curve I like is dentites. Norm Zane, bruh. The GM at this point was pantomiming Jackson's overly macho body language, and clapped dead man's player on the back loudly. Deadman you said it would be 500 nuyen to rough this Simon Berkowitz up? How much violence constitutes roughed up? The GM made a point to snigger sophomorically at the word titin constitutes. Jackson he needs to be black and blue and all shades of red, yo. Once he can't walk no more, I want you to take a picture of him and send it to my number. I ma hit you up with my digits now, dog. No homo. Just send me the pictures when you done going down on that guy. No homo. I wire you your money when you do your services. Right, dog. No homo. Cause I don't take no services from dudes. Norm Zane. This dog likes the passe. Deadman Koi Gaoka Noramasu. The deed will be done. Johnson San. Back to 2D and Dervish's run. They looked up the executive. Did some digging. Found the mistress house. 2D waited outside with his pickup and hacked the street lights to direct traffic except the mistress herself away from the block while Dervish beat his way into her garage. She parked her America in the garage, stepped outside, and Dervish promptly popped out from behind her storage shelf and snapped her neck in one twist. He covered her in a tarp, hucked her in the pickup truck, and the two of them made carefully for downtown. Deadman spent his day shadowing the nerd. Man, was Simon Berkowitz a nerd. Pocket protectors and bowl cuts dude. Like the polar opposite of Mr. Jackson. And, at the last moment, inexplicably, he got cold feet and decided that Simon was an innocent man and he would not harm him. The GM, the other players, and I all have our own pet theories for what the hell happened. I figure he thought playing a morally ambiguous, hell, evil, character would be easy, and was having problems with it now. Maybe he thought the job was a trick. There's another hypothesis, that his unwashed player saw a little too much of himself in the nerd. Point being, a BTAC suited dead man ran up to the nerd and began squealing on the whole plan to him in broken weeaboo Japan English. Try to imagine how you would feel if, walking around campus, a Japanese dude ran up to you in illegal military gear and started screaming about Simon San. A Furata boy is going to beat you up yeah, it was kind of surreal. He explained that the evil Mr. Jackson all but demanded that he perform this dishonorable task, but luckily, Deadman had a devious idea to cheat Mr. Jackson and get out ahead. While not wronging Berkowitz, you see, he would go buy some cosmetics which incidentally cost pretty much the whole reward and then make Simon up to look like he'd been beaten black and blue. Simon, not wanting to be beaten up by a clearly mentally unstable man, relented. Problem in addition to all of the problems inherent in this whole retarded plan, 
like how it was costing him what he would get back. Trout relied on facial sculpt, melanin control, voice control, and so on to do his disguising for him, so he hadn't actually bought any ranks in disguise. He had three dice to it, one because he was defaulting. He rolled a one. Critical glitch. Simon came out looking like pick related. Bafflingly, Trout uploaded the pick to Mr. Jackson anyway, figuring that it would have to do. What followed was, over the phone, a 19 year old frat boy explaining runner ethics to a 28 year old Japanese man. Dude, so look. Running ain't about ethics and then good and evil and shit, it's about doing the job, yeah hear him? And sometimes that job's gonna suck dick, like Tracy in the sorority down the street, yo. Sometimes it's even gonna come back to bite ya ass, like Tracy's herpes. She gave head like a fucking angel though, mang, you shoulda been there. Point Ben, as a shatterer you don't got such ops to turn down a job, homie. Sure you can pick and choose yo jobs coming in, but once you says it's on motherfucker, then shit is on. You gotta do the job, dude. Still, it's not a complete loss cause I'm sending this picture to a Roy girl in econ class, but it's the principle of the thing, Norm Zane. You don't get cash if you don't beat up no nerds. Peace out. Meanwhile, 2D and Dervish had dumped the girl squarely at the foot of the WP official's doorstep. 2D failed his signature check and blew out the entire building's node with a databum, causing emergency services to come running. The two newbie runners cheesed it out of there, heading back to the runner bar. When there, they ran into a dejected dead man. Or rather, he ran into them, because he had since changed his face and even though he could recognize them, they couldn't recognize him. 2D had not by this point become paranoid enough to start checking prospective teammates for active criminal sins. Deadman asked the other two if they were runners, too, and what kind of job they'd done today. Did they beat a guy up? Maybe take his things? 2D and Dervish promptly enlightened Deadman as to that they had, in fact, killed an innocent woman for a paltry sum and mafia goodwill. Deadman was amazed that two souls could be so truly ruthless, and gave them his comb code in case they ever needed an infiltrator. It probably isn't a surprise that the next job came through to 2D and Dervish, not dead man. The job was simple, the Johnson was a blustery, pink-faced mafioso, and he explained that a small gang called the PH-34RM0NG3RS were muscling in on his turf. The gang consisted of Bojuk, a burly Rastafarian orc who was a cybered up veteran of the Amazonia conflict, Rager, an elf spellknack with a video game addiction, Gears, an orc rigger with a sexy custom Harley Davidson and four hangers-on, one of whom was a gigantic troll named Bunny. So long as we could kill Bojuk, Rager, and Gears, the others would probably split, but we needed to kill those three before Mr. Johnson would give us our money. Mostly for metagame reasons, we called up Deadman and promptly invited him into the job. Okay, entirely for metagame reasons. First came the legwork. We discovered fairly early on that Gears kept a regular schedule each morning, and it would be easy to hit him while he was out and about. Rager had a bad habit of playing games and hot sim when he felt he could get away with it, which would make him easy pickings for Technomancer toasting. Lucky for us, we discovered that Bunny was actually the brother of another one of the hangers-on, Raj. Weak link, here we go. Since no one else had any infiltration skills, we made the terrible mistake of sending Deadman to scope out Raj, as Raj walked through an alley in the slums. He was assaulted by a rival ganger, and it turned into a quick hand-to-hand -hand scuffle before Raj finally put the other ganger down. He looked out into the street, making sure that no one had seen the fight. Deadman used this opportunity to begin stripping the unconscious ganger naked to sell his gear at the next vendor, while in the tax suit. So basically, it looked like the ghost of the alleyway TN was molesting the guy. Raj promptly walked over, eyes on dead man. Dead man did nothing because he can't see me. Raj drew a pistol and placed it against dead man's temple. Dead man suddenly realized that he had a pair of pants slung over the shoulder of his tax suit, to say nothing of the wallet he was leafing through. Raj tax suit off, Mythurfica. Dead man wait. I'll tell you everything. I'm a shadow runner. Let me tell you about my teammates. Raj, go on. And on that cliffhangery note, I need to bounce. I can probably get back before the thread times out, but in case I don't, I'll toss the thread onto the archives to reference back to it when I pick up the story. The story is far from over, and I hope to return to it later today or tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll keep the page up on my phone. I'd love to hear some Shadoran stories from you guys. So, in his hurry to squeal, Deadman had forgotten that 2D was running comms, and he was speaking while wearing a subvical mic. 2D's icon, 
with its little bomb head, popped into Deadman and Raj's AR. So, our infiltrator is an idiot. Look, what will it take to get you and Bunny the fuck out of Dodge by this time tomorrow? Raj made his check to identify the 2D bomber by his iconography, and frowned. Shit. Well, you're gonna have to pay me an awful lot. 2D laughed dryly. How does 2000 Nguyen and not dying sound? Raj's eyes widened. You're offering me 2000 Nguyen? 2D responded. Yes. By which I mean you will be stealing every appliance worth more than 100 Nguyen in your apartment. I tallied up the costs. If you don't count Rago's computer gear, you probably got 4 grand worth of shit in there. Raj thought the proposition over. And what if I decide to screw you over? Kill your infiltrator? 2D laughed outright at this. You mean the infiltrator who just tried to sell us out? Point. Okay, gimme till noon tomorrow. You screw us and you die by inches, Raj. I don't doubt it. Most of the rest of the day was spent with 2D and Dervish violently berating dead man. Since for meta game reasons we couldn't just kill him. Don't worry, we got fed up enough eventually. Just not yet. The rest of the plan, the part without dead man, went like grease clockwork. We started off with Gears. Gears made his rounds early in the morning, so 2D and Dervish hopped into the truck and followed him onto the freeway. With Dervish at the wheel, 2D hacked his Harley and activated the emergency brake, sending Gears careening into oncoming traffic. One ganger down. 2D pulled the hacked bike over onto the shoulder, with the intent of dressing Dervish up in leathers and then having him appear to be Gears on the way back. What neither teammate expected was the fact that the bike was the pimpingest thing since Gangsta Rap. It was covered in gold studs, sported flame decals in both real and AR space, and had a martini shaker affixed to the back. It had a custom horn and colored brights. It had a Doberman drone with a gun in the sidecar. It was, in fact, the least subtle bike ever made. Dervish loved it, and promptly claimed it as his own. 2D, for his part, stuck a machine sprite in the drone before logging on to Cap Rega. Rega was playing a fantasy game when 2D struck. He had a brief moment to recognize that bomb-headed dudes were not part of the Dungeon of the Dragon King before lethal biofeedback boiled his brain out of his nose. Bunny and Raj made off with a fridge filled with small appliances and com links, escaping out the back. And, finally, Bojok and his two remaining thugs were taken very much by surprise when Gears rammed his motorbike into Bojok, and then he and the drone proceeded to butcher everyone present. Against the better judgement of everyone involved, but trying to be nice to the player, Deadman was given a full share of the cash afterwards. So what do you guys think? I think it's great. I'm not as up to speed with Shadowrun gore as I am with 40k, but it's still a really fun universe. It's probably one of my favourite science fiction universes to like, you know, delve into. Um, as always, let us know what you thought down below, and also remember to click on that notification bell to stay up to speed with all the latest videos and all that. And also definitely check out the Discord, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the Discord, I'm very active in it, so like, you know, definitely check it out if you get the chance. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer that I can feel the tumors growing on my back. And it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay. Can you help a nigga out and just stop this? Please?